he's dead or he's gone someplace else. And so what he does is he has a great love for his younger brother, Benjamin. And so he takes a cup and hides it in Benjamin's backpack. And what happens is that as they're leaving, he accuses Benjamin of stealing the cup and says, he's going nowhere, he's going to prison. And so what happens is one of the brothers, Judah, confesses everything to Joseph. And he says, well, I don't know if I believe you. You go get your father and bring him back here and have him tell me that that's what happened. So, at that point, he tells them that the famous quote, I am Joseph, your brother. The terror in them, the fear in them, turns to rejoicing. Pharaoh invites a family to come and live in Egypt so that they can share the abundance that's there because of their brother Joseph. They continue to live in Egypt and what they meant to do harm and evil, God intends for it to be a good thing. And so they live in Egypt and Joseph stays pure. He gives God credit for everything. He's willing to even forgive his brothers. So, there you have the composite of the story. So, what does this story mean? What do we learn from it in a secular world? Well, this story has everything in it. This story has sibling rivalry. It has sex. It has greed. It has jealousy. And if you just read it as a secular story, or if you saw it on television, what you'd learn from it is don't try and kill your brother. <laughs> that's number one, yeah. All right. Well, that's what we learn from it in the secular world. What would a good Jew learn from this story? Three things. Number one, no matter what, you stay upright before God. Which is exactly what Joseph did. Even though he could have given in to the wife who wanted to have sex with him, mm -hmm. Even though he could have done a, a lot of other things, Joseph stays upright before God. And there's a great lesson in this story about that, that that's what we should do. The second thing you would learn as a good Jew is that good always wins over evil. So no matter what it looks like on the outside, Good will win. That God has a way of making that happen. So even though in the middle of the story it looks like evil wins or the brothers win or those kinds of things, that doesn't happen. The third thing to learn is this. As a good Jew, forgiveness is always possible. And so when you hear from people, I just can't forgive somebody, what they're really saying is, I don't want to let go. I don't want to forgive. Because forgiveness is always possible. And here you have almost, uh, you know, if there was ever a story that you could say, I would understand why Joseph wouldn't have forgiven his brother wouldn't have locked his brothers up, wouldn't have sent his brothers out. 
of the, of the, of the country with no food. <clears throat> Here you have that forgiveness is always possible. So, what do we learn from this as Christians? The high point of the story is this. It's when Joseph says to his brothers, what you intended for evil, God intended for good. Hang on to this, because this becomes so important. Because what this does is it sets the basis for the crucifixion. How you would say. Well. The beloved. You start with the beloved son. In the case of Joseph. You have he's the beloved son. And the first born son of Rachel. The favorite wife. And you have Jesus who is the <coughs> beloved son of the Heavenly Father. So what happens? Well, how do we know that they're the beloved? Joseph has the coat that glorifies God. Jesus is told at his baptism, this is my beloved son on whom my favor rests. So what happens? They're sold or sold out. Joseph is sold for 20 pieces of silver. Jesus was a little more expensive for 30. And then what happens? After they're sold out, they're both left for dead. Joseph is put into slavery, and Jesus is made a slave of death. He's given a destiny that he does not deserve. What happens? They both offer forgiveness. Joseph says, I am Joseph, your brother. And Jesus says, Father, forgive them. But see, What's so important about this is that they are both sold out by their brothers, by their tribe. Joseph is sold out by the ten brothers. Jesus is sold out by his brothers, his clan of Israel. So they're both sold out. What happens is, literally, the intervention of God. And Joseph becomes the one who saves Egypt through the famine. And by the intervention of God, Jesus is risen from the dead. Joseph becomes the means of life, food, but the means for life. It's through Joseph that now his brothers and his family can live. And it's through Jesus 
that his brothers, Israel, and all the world shares in salvation. Isn't that great? How these two stories as opposite, I mean, as far as ways you can you think they could be preparing the Jews for what's going to happen to Jesus. And it answers the question, how in God's name could God have ever forgiven Israel for what they did to his son? And the whole foundation to answer that is right here. That God forgives the nation of Israel and the Romans the same way that Joseph forgives his brothers. That mercy is always possible. And that God can look at a situation like this and say to the Jews, what you intended for evil, I intend for good. What you intended by selling out Judas, I intend for good. And so people ask the question, would God have forgiven Judas? Based upon this story, absolutely. But it's Judas who wouldn't accept the mercy and ends up committing suicide. Which is why for so long, people thought if you committed suicide, of course, you couldn't go to heaven. Because you were refusing God's mercy. I mean, now we understand a lot more psychologically about how people do that and why they commit suicide and those kind of things. But see, this answers that question. How could God have possibly looked down and saw what the Jews did to his beloved son when he's hanging there on the cross and forgiven him? But Joseph sets the whole foundation for that. He says, I am Joseph, your brother. And he restores that relationship. And what does God do with Jesus? He restores that relationship because there is no doubt. There are people who ask a question about Judas. Well, was Judas just an actor in the this, in this story? And so we shouldn't hold him accountable. No. What Judas did is Judas fully intended evil. He fully intended to sell Jesus out. In the same way these brothers had no idea this was going to end up here. But this is how God can take something that is evil and wrong and bring life and salvation out of it. And this sets the whole foundation for what's going to happen in the Paschal mystery and the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this answers the question, how can the Jews continue to be the chosen people? Because God restores what was broken. Not because of them, but because forgiveness is always possible. So we learned several things out of this. That no matter what's happened to us, we can't forgive. That no matter what others intended to do, God can turn it to good. And that God in his mercy was really preparing Israel for the story of Jesus and the story of salvation right from the beginning. Now isn't this delicious? delicious. <laughs>